Now, <clears throat> there's plenty of people on YouTube that make these flags. Um, most of them are flat. There are a few wavy ones. Uh, so what I did is uh, I found five different um, techniques that I liked and I kind of combined them together and came up with my own design. So now what I'm going to do is uh, just stack them up. Stacks of four. And the uh, last one will be a stack of five. So there we go. So there's my 13 stripes. Grab a Sharpie. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, then I'll go back through again. I go A, B, C, D, E. I'll go back again. I'll go R, W. R, W. Ah, all right, so you get seven reds, six whites. Turn around so you can see it. Ba ba ba. Me, I just uh, took a piece of wood and drew my uh, uh, peaks and valleys. Uh, you can see there, you know, the distances between the peaks aren't all the same. The heights of the uh, peaks aren't the same, the, the dips of the valleys aren't all the same. So what we have here are hash marks with numbers 1 through 13. And we're going to get stripe number 1. So I'll bring you down here, can you see this? I believe you can see it. We're going to line the edge of the 2x4. Tuck it in tight against these my locking boards. Pull the, the template in tight, starting on number one. Trace it out back and forth so it's nice and dark. Make sure nothing moves. There. So there's there's number one. For the next one, this is number two, correct? Uh, yep. Now, lock it into this corner, pull it tight against the fixture blocks, and I will set the template on number two. Doesn't have to be perfect. You know, if it moves a little one side or the other, not a big deal. Now I'm left over, and I'm left with a little piece at the end. I go back and put number two. Uh, I'll put number two here on the outside edge of this 2x4 here and finish my line. So that one's done. And then once uh, number 13 is done, then we'll take it over to the bandsaw and cut them out. All right, so there's the first one. And you don't have to be perfect following your line. So, got my two stripes. So, number one, there's one flag. A is the other. And so I'll just set these back on my table. Cut the balance of the uh, stripes, and then I'll catch back up with you on the next step. Bye. So we have here, you see the, I don't know if you can see it, but the numbers are on the bottom here. So this is one at the top, working its way down to 13, and it gives me the, um, the vertical stripes going on an angle from left to right, top down. Now if I were to stack these in the opposite direction, where I would start one at the bottom, 
and then do number two, and then number three, and so on and so forth. Now this is going to change the direction of the wave where instead of going top down left to right, it'll go bottom up left to right. So you have your choice of the two directions when you make your flags. So it goes from left to right. The angle of the stripes will go top down. I don't know how well you can see that. The lighting's not great because it's so sunny out in the front. But that's how it looks right there. And like I said, if you stack them in the opposite direction, the, the, the vertical, ver, yeah, the uh, vertical waves will go this way instead of this way. So. All right, now for this step, uh, first thing I do, so I've got them light, laid out, one at the top, 13 closest to me. I write on the, the first one I'm gonna work on, I write first together, last apart. So I, I'll need uh, three, drills, three cordless drills. Uh, so I will have a one with a pilot drill. This is, I use all two and a half inch um, deck screws. So 764 pilot drill, a countersink drill bit, and my uh, star Torx bit. First thing I'll do is I'll get these I'm sure these are both pushed against the stopping block and I'll and now with these being construction grade 2 by 4s they're not exactly you know straight you can see this one's got some wobble that one's got some wobble you know, all of these have a little bit of wobble to them some more than others so I'll push these together push them down on the one end push both, push both of these down and I have a uh, marks here on either side so three inches in from here and then three inches in from there that way i know i make my if i make my screws inside those marks i don't have to worry about hitting them with my table saw when i square up the ends um, being that they're 40 inches long right now and i need to cut them down to 37 inches no matter what that three bringing them inside three inches no matter what how much i cut off at either end i don't have to worry about cutting into a screw so I push both of these ends down, make my first hole on the high side. I always make my drills, uh, my holes in the peaks of the flags. Slide this down here. So now that I've got that hole drilled, I'll hit, the, hit it real fast with the countersink. And then I will Screw it in. Now I'm not going to screw it in tight because I need to get the other the other ones done. So uh, continuously push down. Does it make my second one? And now I, I'm only going to use three screws. So I'm going to use one on the out uh, outside high points, and then one somewhere within these three other uh, peaks. So I'll just go right here. Doesn't really matter. I'll try to mix them up a little bit as I go along. Once again, I'll squeeze them together and try to push them down. Now, we'll go right here with it. As long as I go low enough uh, in, that, in that peak there, I won't have to worry about hitting the screw when I'm grinding it. So I'll put this one in. Tighten everything down. So now I'm going to push it forward. I'm going to spin it around. I'm going to make little marks on here to show where I drilled the last, where I put the last hole at. So I'm not putting them on the same holes. Uh, having the screw hit the other one. So now I'm going to pick this one up. I'm going to turn it around. Line it. Put it right there. Now I won't have to keep sliding these, uh, as I go it'll take care of itself. So once again I'm going to push it all the way to this, to the stopping block. Push down here and make my first hole. So now I can see 
where my last hole was right there. So I know I'd, so I don't put the screw in the same spot. Throw my pilot, hit my countersink, and screw in the screw. Like I said, I'm not gonna put it in all the way. Go on to the next one, I can see my mark here, so I'll go right here. You guys see what I'm doing? And I'm going to the next one, push it down, squeeze them together a little. I can see where my last screw was. Countersink. I like the countersinks and then I know that the head is recessed and it's not going to uh, push against the next stripe and it helps to prevent cracking of the 2x4. And then once, so now I'll make my marks of where the screw heads are at. Take the next one, push this one forward and now I don't have to keep sliding them down. This will just progress evenly all the way across. So I'll do one more and then uh, I'll turn the camera off and assemble them all and then bring it back on. So I can see where my screw marks are at. So as long as I'm inside my three inch mark there. Make my hole, countersink it. Screw it together. Now, there's a reason why I do it this way, which I'll explain later, um, when you'll see why it matters. So I got a screw here, and got a screw over there. There's nothing in this section here, no marks. So I'm gonna put a screw here. A little smoky on that one. It's my sap real close to a knot also. So a lot of sap and resin in this piece of wood. So I had a, a hole or a screw there. So I'll go looks like we're kind of moving our weight inward so I'll start coming back out. Don't want all the screws all drifting towards the center and then the outside is just flapping around and then I gotta add more screws later. Uh, so come sink. A little bit time consuming doing this way because now after I've grind after I uh, put it into parallel clamps and do all the grinding I have to take it back apart again to, uh, to do my staining. Then I'll have to screw it all back together again with my, uh, and glue it after the stain. So there's a little more time consuming. It takes me about, if I do one flag at a time, it takes me about 12 hours. If I do two flags at the same time, it takes me 16 hours to do both. So it's much more, um, uh, effective if I just do two at the same time. So I'll do, I'll screw all these together and then I'll, these are the numbers, one through 13, and then I'll do the letters A through M, I believe it is. Um, and then I'll put one aside and uh, do all my grinding, grab the other one, do all my grinding, and so on and so forth. So I'll, if I do two at the same time, it's much more cost, or uh, 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 much more effective in the amount of time. So I make my marks. Uh, I'll go ahead and screw this one together and work my way up and uh, I'll get back with you guys in a moment when it's time to put them in the parallel clamps and do the grinding. So see you in a minute. Bye. Tighten them down. Now I'm going to go through, I'm going to grind out all the high spots down, 
grind all the peaks down to the valleys. The valleys don't get ground that much. They do get ground, but not a lot. Not as much as the, uh, the peaks. So I'm gonna come through and then knock off all these high spots on both sides, and then come through and smooth them out. And uh, so what I wanna show you now, so we've got, this is flat, the, the numbered flag, one through 13. Then we have here, this is the lettered flag. Um, so I don't know if you can see this, but you'll see the difference in the directions of the, uh, of the waves. So these waves, top down, left to right. These waves, left to right, bottom up. So that's the difference in how you stack them when you start before you assemble them. So right now these are all screwed together, assemble and get out the grinder and go to town with it. The first few flags I just used, a, oh, get down here. First few flags I just used a little flapper disc, a four inch flapper disc and a four inch grinder. Um, then I switched over to a Kudzall um, extreme wood carving disc. Uh, this is about 80 bucks for this disc alone. It's a four and a half inch, or this one's a four, it doesn't really matter. Um, but this one here, um, it works. Uh, it's a little uh, choppier. Uh, it doesn't leave as smooth of a finish. Um, this one does a really good job. Very aggressive, takes off a lot of wood really fast. And I can get a lot more control over it with the, uh, with the curved, you know, the curved edge here. Uh, I can really get in there and, and, and get a nice clean cut with it. So we're gonna start on one side, work my way to the other. Alright, so I'll bring it over here and show you what I've done so far. Just this quick little couple of minutes. Or a minute or two, I think. It didn't take long at all. So, uh, get this in here. Zoom in a bit. So what you can see here is that, uh, so I come I'm down through here. So you see all these high spots. These are what I'm knocking down first. Knock them down till they meet the valley and then smooth it out to the valley and come through and, and give it the contours, give it the shape. And then uh, once that's all done, all the way throughout the whole flag, then I'll come back through with the orbital grinder and um, smooth out these, uh, these chop marks, get nice and smooth. Uh, when I do the orbital grinder, I usually, usually only use a 60, gig, 60 grit uh, pad and get it down to almost 100% and then go back through with the uh, with 120 grit just to get some of the scratch marks out. spots down get everything to join up now when I go through and sand it with the orbital like I can see a couple spots right here I don't know if you can see it but there's still some raised spots but when I go through with the orbital sander and uh, I may have to come through and it's not unusual to have to come through and touch it up with the uh, carving disc <laughs> Alright, 
so here it is sanded nice and smooth flag around Okay, so now it's time to do the burning. Uh, even even strokes all the way across. Uh, the closer you get to it, the darker it'll be. So I'm just gonna start right across. One end to the other. Don't wanna burn it too much. Just wanna bring out the grains in the wood. See that? Looks really good. So what I like to do is I'll go back through in the recesses, in the valleys, and I'll put a little extra burn in there. Uh, does a nice job of, of creating a shadow effect once it's all stained and glossed. All right, so now that I've got the recesses burned, what I like to do is, uh, A little finishing touch I like to come through back through with a drywall sanding sponge and just like I'm making these recesses darker I'll go through and make the, the top of the peaks a little lighter and some light sanding right across the top and I'll, I'll feather outwards at the edges blow it off Because we're going to take them back apart and we need to make sure we put them back in the right order. I'll put the one side down, make sure the bottom is in line with that stripe, make sure the top is in line with the, with the top of the flag, make sure this is straight here. So it looks pretty good right there. So now I'll hold the one corner down. And I'll put a piece of tape here in the middle. And I'll put a piece of tape up here on the top. Nice long piece of tape here. So I'm just going to tape that down. Run my thumbnail along this edge of the edge of the stencil, Give me a nice line, make sure this all still looks good, yeah, it looks pretty good right there, grab a razor blade, grab 
a razor blade. Now I'm going to uh, I'm cut the tape along the line of the stencil. Now I'm going to use a decent amount of pressure, not super hard, but I want the line to be in the wood as well, in the wood of the stripes. That line will help prevent bleeding over of the stain from the red to the blue and all that stuff. The white to the blue. That line, that, that line will uh, create a valley to prevent the, the um, stain of pool in the valley before going on to the other, to the other color. All right, so now, now I have this blue line here, that's going to be the outside of the blue. So since I'm going to be coloring red and white first, I'm going to take another piece of tape, and I'm going to butt it right up to the, um, the other line. The other piece of tape. Butt it right up to it. And because we have curves, you're going to have to maneuver the tape along. You can't just lay it down flat. You actually have to twist it and turn it. And then we can peel our original piece off. There we go. Take our blade, cut in between the stripes. All right, so now we're good to uh, now we're good to stain. I like to do the white first um, because I put it on heavy, and I don't wipe it off. Um, the red and the blue, I put it on and then I wipe it off. Um, I think that if I don't wipe the red and the blues off, then they're too bright um, and being so thick. You don't get to see the lines from the uh, of the wood grain after burning it. Where the white, leaving it on thick, it doesn't affect it at all. In fact, if I think I, if, when I wipe it off, it's a little too muted, um, not bright enough. Put a decent amount on there. Usually start somewhere in the middle-ish. I splattered it. Start somewhere in the middle-ish. Work my way up to the stripe because I don't want to put too much stain on where the tape's at. Uh, to try to avoid bleeding into it, into the uh, under the tape. Even to stain out so it's not uh, real, real heavy in one spot as opposed to the other. So I go all the way to the, to the top and I go through the sides and I stain down about half the, half the depth of the uh, stripe. Because if you don't, then any of these little spots like right here, so they have a little knot right here. If you don't stain the sides of the stripe, then you'll be able to see the bare wood um, through that knot. All right, once again, we're going to start at the middle. Work our way towards the tape. Get right up to the tape and come on back. Not gonna worry so much about even coverage because we're gonna wipe it off with the with the rag. I always wipe away from the tape of the union. Make sure you wipe the sides also, so you're not left with a big bulb of uh, steam. I'm going to put it off to the side. Slide these forward. Down the next one. Hey, looks good. Still see the nice lines of the 
for the green. Looks good. I've already taped off the lines from the red to the bare and the white to the bare, you know, bare wood. Um, so what's nice about also having that, uh, that razor blade line in there it gives me a nice clean line to tape up to. Okay, so now we've got them, the flags, the tape taken off, uh, the flags laid out in the right orientation. Uh, thanks to the numbering on the side, allows me to make sure everything is in its right spot. No guesswork, no wasted time trying to figure out, oh, this doesn't go here, this goes there, and blah, 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 blah. Don't have to worry about any of that. So now I'm going to put them back together, um, screws and glue, and in this part, you might find occasionally you may have to put an extra screw in to bind together the any boards that might be warped a little bit, twisted. Um, so start and once again, you know, I know that this is where I start. So it's first together, last apart. So I'll start here, and I just run a whatever you know whatever wood glue of your choice, and I just you know. The high spots I swirl it a little bit. Low spots just go straight across. I don't worry about squeegeeing it or spreading it out. Once you put it together, it's gonna spread anyways. Right here, Send this forward. Couple screws. Get a couple started before I torque them down. I know the holes are, the uh, screws are finding their previous holes. I torque the one side down all the way, um, and then the other side's lifted a little bit, it might not find its uh, previous pilot hole. Tighten it down. Look for any bows, separations in the wood. This one looks pretty good. Look for any glue that's coming up through the seams, because now would be the time to clean it. So I'll spin this one around. Turn it forward just a little bit, and then take this one and turn it. Turn it down flat, put some glue on it. So, got a little bit of a bow right here I think I'll take care of. Now what's nice is that I can see where the, uh, the screws for the next one, because they're two and a half inch screws and the board's only an inch and a half, I can see where the next screw is going to go so I make sure I don't put a, uh, this screw in that same spot. So, I think we'll go... go right here. Now it is possible that I could hit this screw, 
but generally I try to go back and forth try not to put the same like before I was making the marks so the screws aren't all in the same spot and then if I get any glue that comes up between the seams what I'll do is I'll take a uh, What I'll do is I'll take a razor blade, well first I'll wipe it with a rag and then I'll take a razor blade in between the two seams and get all the visible glue out, wipe it off, keep getting in there so I don't see any of the wood glue. So that one looks good. Spin this one around. And like I said, when I go on the, the, the low spots, just go straight across. The high spots, I get a little zigzag. Okay, so we've got the stencil taped down in place. Got our Dremel with our 106 bit on it. Let's see if I can try to get this to focus in here. Where's it at? I can't run it. There we go. This is the 106 bit. There we go. Small. Um, so go ahead and we'll outline all the stars. Then we'll take the stencil off and fill them in. So we'll just lightly back and forth along the edge of the stencil. All right, so we've got our, our bigger, uh, Carving bit in here. So there we go. You do want to rub rub the stars, get any of the loose wood that's sitting on top, loose shavings off. Because if you don't, then you'll regret it later. Now what I'll do is I'll grab my air gun, blow this off, and then it's uh, ready for the next step. All right, the next step is to grab the old butane torch and uh, go through, go through and put in a, a burn on the stars so they match the burn on the stripes and you want to be real light with it because you don't want to burn the, uh, the blue stain Alright, so on this next step, 
take a piece of paper towel, lay it down so I'm not dragging my hand across it. And uh, being left-handed, I'll start on my right and work my way left, uh, top, down, and then over. Uh, so I just take some stain off the lid of the can, put a big dab here in the middle, and then I work my way out to the, to the uh, points of the stars. I don't go all the way to the edges. I leave the, uh, the outside edge of the star wood tone. I just, I'm just painting the center. This way the, uh, the stars will match the stripes. Okay, so now that the stars are painted and dried, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over onto its face. I'm gonna put these little Craig blocks, these little points here. I'm gonna put these under underneath it so we don't flatten out any of the uh, high spots, damage all that hard work we just did. Okay, so now we got a couple of pieces of fairing strip cut at 13 inches. Grab our square. And we're going to go eight inches in from the edge. So we'll go eight and then inch and a half. Go on the other side. Eight and then inch and a half. Go up here. Square it up. A couple of reference lines. Fairing strips on. Now you want to make sure you don't go too far down. So I usually go about halfway up from the second stripe. Just eyeball it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some marks for where I want to put the screws. Over there, there, and then one right here in the middle. Middle ish. Do the same thing on this side, here, here, and there. A little off. So now I use my punch, do some, make some marks, or some dents for the pilots. They'd be in fairing strips. They'll split pretty easy if you don't pre drill your holes. Now the holes are pre-drilled and countersunk. For this step here, putting these down, I will use one and a quarter inch screws. Generally start at one end and work my way to the other. Janky head on that one. Line it up where I want it. Okay, so now it's time to work on the sides. So Um, so I do a, a 120 grit sanding across all of it, uh, sand all the face, and then I, I knock the sharp edge with the sander off of the, the, uh, the edges here. I knock the, sh knock the sharp corner off, I should say, where's my camera at? I knock the sharp corner off um, with the orbital sander.
I'm gonna put this on pretty good, pretty thick. Don't, I'm not gonna worry about brush start, brush marks at all because I'm gonna rub them out with the rags. You see there's not a whole lot of uh, stain on that. That just gives it a much darker look. This is just a uh, interior water-based polyurethane semi-gloss. So I'm going to... Not put it on too heavy, but I want to put it on fairly even. And I lay the flags down flat so there's no runs. And if it does collect anywhere, it's going to collect in the low spots and you won't, you won't notice it. I just go from one side to the other, back and forth, one stripe at a time. All right, so we'll let that dry overnight, and then um, tomorrow I will assemble the frame, stain the outsides and the top uh, edge, and then I will use this um, Rust-Oleum, which you can get at either Home, Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, now this is just a uh, semi-gloss clearer. Basically, it's just a spray paint enamel clear, um, and. This I find is a little more durable than the polyurethane for the front that uh, to use on the frame. The frame is um, more since it's the cabinet grade uh, uh, pine. It is more susceptible to dings and nicks, and you know then you gotta touch it up with a sharpie marker. And now it's time to nail these in place. Slide it down to the edge. Should I get my nail around it? So I'm going to nail highs and lows. High, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. Um, spin around, do the same. Then I'll pull the clamps off and get the spaces where I couldn't nail because of the clamps. I'm just going to go highs and lows. There's a high down there. Set this down, spin it around. All right, same as before, we're going to do the highs and lows. All right, now I can take take these side clamps off. Right, so there's both of those. I can take the, these shorter clamps off completely now. And I'll go back through and finish nailing the top and bottoms where I couldn't because of the clamps. Here's one's missing. Spin it around. This one in there. Those look good. That looks good. That looks good. Yeah, I think we're good there. And there, that's the inside. Top right there. Like I said, inside. So now, get my square back out again, my little mallet, that looks pretty good right there, 
That looks pretty good right there. Not gonna tighten it down just yet. So I'm gonna, this side is definitely off. A little wax. Too much. There you go, that looks good there. A little bit off still. Alright, looks pretty good. Tighten these clamps down. Just gonna pull them in tight to the flag. Yeah. And then uh the this side I'm gonna do every red stripe. So Put one there. Let's skip that one. Here. There. There. Let's skip that one. I go there. Over here, go through the through the edges of the frame. Three there, just to. Uh, Make sure the frame is nailed to itself. There we go. Just gonna skip a couple there. There, do the frame corners. This one is missing. There, there, there. This one is missing. Got that one. Spin it around. There, missing one. There. Now, before I stain and uh, finish the, uh, the stain and the gloss, I'm going to flip this over. I guess I do it this way. Usually I do it on the other side, but I'll do it this way so you guys can see. Move this camera back here. Now I gotta put the hangers on. 16 gauge galvanized wire. Heavy D-rings for hangers. My punch in my small square. You go uh, four boards down. Make sure you do the flat side on the wood. Center it on that fourth board. And use your punch. Once again. Fourth one down. Done with that. Ah, see, I'm so used to being on this side of the table, I'm upside down. It's supposed to be up here. See, you guys screwed me up again. I'm trying to do this on film, on camera. It's totally gotten screwed up. 
your guys' fault. Hopefully enough people will like the video that will make it worth it. Guys going to be like, what's these two extra holes in here for? Because I'm a moron. That's why they're there. Well, at least I realized it before I put the wire on. That would have sucked. All right. So here, we have length. We length the wire out. So the way you do this is you go whatever set. So it doesn't matter if you start going underneath or over the top, but you're gonna go one direction or the other. I like to go start underneath. You're gonna fold it over the top, underneath this one. And since I started going under, now I'm gonna finish going over and then feed it back through. So through the bottom, over the top, under the original wire, through the top, or over the top, and back through the wire. Grab my pliers, give it a tug, give this one a tug, squeeze these together, and then a tug. Okay, now I'm just gonna wrap it around like a barber pole. The number of wraps you give it, it's kind of, you know, whatever you feel like. should be good and then when I cut this wire I like to cut it in a direction so that the it's facing away from the wall so it'll be under the wire I don't have to worry about it scratching somebody's wall I'm gonna stretch it out give it a little bend there stretch it out Oh, I don't know, six to eight inches past. Make a cut. Now come back to this side. Once again, we're gonna go same as last time. We're gonna go under, over the top. I wanna pull this nice and tight. And we're gonna go under the wire. Through the top. And this is the part where it gets tricky because it's going to want to kink on you. So I'm just going to pull this straight through. Try to get it nice and tight. Now I have to feed it back through this loop. This is where it's going to want to kink. Not too bad. Squeeze these two together. And do your barber pole wrap. Do a little harder on this side because you don't have as much room to work with. Alright, that should be good there. Cut my wire. Now I'm gonna grab the wire with both hands, I'm gonna pull it towards the top. Get any of that extra slack out of there. There we go. So now, my recommendations are 
two screws 16 inches apart in your studs because these flags weigh roughly 30 pounds. So we'll look at our 16 inches right there. Right there where my thumb's at. These are 16 inches. So screw here, screw there, screw it into a wall so there's a little less than three quarters of an inch hanging out. Put your wires on there and allow the, the uh, flag will sit flush to the wall. All right, so that part is done. So I have this paper left over from the last two flags. I'll cut the size. Lay it down to protect the flag. You get any black stain on it. more painters tape make sure any spots where the flag is showing around the paper cover those spots up all right Sorry about that, my memory card was full, but there we are. Rustic, wavy, American flag. Try to get this so it's in view better, better in the camera view. Turn it up some. There we go. Yep, so there it is. All right, I hope you guys liked it.